So we have done something crazy. I don't know what I've gotten myself into, but we bought a mail truck. Hey y'all, my name is Nick and welcome back to State of Woods Co. This video is gonna be a little bit different than everything else you see on the channel and I have very good reason for it. I'll get into that here shortly, but for right now, I only have four months to complete this entire build. So let's get to it. Check this out. From what I can tell in the plate, it's a 1965 West Coaster Melster. I'm really excited about this. We have some high hopes for this and the Maker Collab University that we've started. So we are gonna convert this into a school bus, which is gonna be a tall task because right now it's gasoline powered. The motor is completely out of it. I mean, look, look at this, look at this motor. <laughs> there you go. The whole motor assembly is right there in pieces. There's not even a seat to sit in, which is, you know, saying something. We only paid $600 for this thing, which is, I think a steal. For a 1965 in pretty good condition, I think that was a steal. Um, I've seen these anywhere from $4,000 to $10,000 after they've been really rebuilt and refurbished. So we're not gonna sell it because we wanna use it for certain purposes, but this thing's gonna be fun. Let's see if we can get this thing off the truck. Now, obviously this thing wasn't gonna roll off the trailer, so I used the tractor and I was really surprised how heavy this thing seemed to be. The whole outside shell is fiberglass, so really the only steel in it is the motor and the chassis. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put these car dollies like you get from Harbor Freight. We're gonna put three of those up underneath, uh, one underneath each wheel and just literally just set it right down so that all we have to do is let go of the tractor and then spin this whole thing around and it's gonna, it's gonna be mobile inside the shop. <laughs> yes! Now we can just do this, right? Oh, it's heavier than I thought. Yes, check it out. It's in the shop, ready to go. Landon, and he is so impatient. He has already started taking things apart. He's so excited. He's like a kid at Christmas. We're gonna strip it all out so that we can see what we need to do. We're gonna get to cutting this thing apart. Let's see what happens. Now, I ended up buying two of these units, this West Coaster Melster and a 1970 Cushman. So there were some duplicate parts and it was hard to really tell what came from what but these things were nasty. House carpet, bugs, it was just completely rusted and gross. I wasn't planning on taking this whole shell off, but I think I'm going to end up doing that, unless it's just a massive pain in the butt. Because we can always lift it up and clean it and paint it from underneath while it's like up on a hoister, up on the tractor or the, the gantry crane. So I worked on this over the weekend just a little bit. I went ahead and took off the back bumper off of the, uh, what I'm calling, the school bus. I'm gonna call it the actual bus now. Um, went ahead and took all of the, the back bumpers off, the little side rails, that was pretty good. Um, we got up underneath the um, carpet in here and it's gonna need some work. So there is definitely some rust underneath here. This has got a lot of bit of wear and tear as well. So we're gonna do some rust protection and replace all of the sheet metal floorboards and, uh, and back truck area. So. Today's agenda is actually to go ahead and start taking out all the electrical components. There is a lot of electrical wires to the turn signals, to the headlights, to pretty much everything. We're gonna go ahead and strip it out because we're gonna be replacing all of it, one thing at a time. They kind of the wire up. They you know, the other piece of wire. <laughs> oh my gosh. The ingenuity right there, just using. Yep. Whatever they, had. whatever they had. All right, it's coming together nicely. We've got all of the electrical out. I've got all of the lamps out, but the one, that one's stripped out. We're gonna have to cut that one out. Um, Landon's got all of the electrical out of the cart, which is really cool. He started to take the dashboard apart and all that. He's working on getting rid of the windshield wiper. Um, one thing that I think is really cool is we're gonna try the speaker that came on the front of the, uh, actually it's not a speaker, it's the horn. We're gonna try the horn that came off the front of this uh, cart. And we're gonna use a Milwaukee M12 battery to wire it up. Let's see if this thing actually works. Cause this is 1965, I highly doubt it's gonna work. All right, let's test it, see if it works. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. <laughs> Holy cow. I cannot believe that that works after, I don't know how many years. It looks like the original. It looks like the original, so I'm guessing it's 1965, 
we are transitioning now to sandblasting. So we are getting everything pretty much sandblasted and clean. And this metal is actually really cleaning up nicely. This is what it's been looking like. And this is what it looks like after it's sandblasted. It actually cleans up really, really nicely. There's a lot of metal in here to do. So we got to get after it. It takes a whole lot of compressed air to, uh, to run this thing. So our compressor is having a little bit of a hard time staying dry and, uh, and keeping up, but it's, it's doing great. So we just got a lot, a lot, a lot of sandblasting to do. Yeah, dirty job. After we got the chassis clean, it was a good time to go ahead and replace the shocks because they were completely gone. All right, so it's time to work on the motor for the bus. Now, my goal was to use the original transmission um, and just basically mount a motor to it. So we picked up a golf cart motor. It's a Navitas um, five kilowatt golf cart motor. The PTO mount right here does not fit what I want to use or what's existing on the bus. So we've got to figure that out. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take all this apart, pull the transmission, see if we can pull it out and see if there's a way that we can either replace the shaft on that or if we can figure out enough information on it to try to either have a, a new adapter to go from that PTO shaft to this one mounted. They're both 10 spline, but the sizes are way different. So. Now we found a workaround for the PTO shaft. We ended up cutting this round metal plate off the plasma and we took it to our local blacksmith to go ahead and weld on the actual PTO that fit this motor. We let them do this because I trust their welds a whole lot better than us since we're sort of learning as we go. So now it just mounts straight to the Lovejoy and everything should work out perfectly. Landon had the smart idea of using a piece of wood as a template to make sure that we have all of our holes positioned and the way that we want to build our motor mount. Putting it on and getting it off was a little bit of a different story, but it was easy to do once we had that template created. Now we drew up everything that we wanted to for the motor mount in our software and then brought it over to the Phantom CNC plasma machine. We cut this out a quarter inch steel and this thing made quick work of this on the plasma. We have just started learning how to use the plasma machine, so this was honestly our very first cut off of the unit, and it came out flawlessly. That ain't bad. Ain't bad at all. <laughs> now we temporarily clamped our motor mount plate that we just cut to the bus. And all we have to do is align it back up and make sure that our holes are all aligned. I used a jack underneath to make sure I get the right angle, as well as some straps to help hold it. The key thing was to make sure that the angle of the differential, the angle of the plate, and the angle of the motor were all right before we welded it in place. All right, we got the motor mounted, so Landon, did the hard part of getting the welds going. I went underneath and did the welds underneath, which I've never welded upside down, and that was absolutely horrific. Um, I'm not even gonna show you the welds, but Landon's welds came out actually fairly deep. <laughs> uh, this, this old metal is very difficult to weld onto, and um, it's just a very precarious place to get to, so don't judge us on our welds. Um, but the plate is in, it's secure. We also bolted it to the uh, existing metal, so that even adds even more stability and strength. So everything's ready, we're gonna grind it up, we're gonna make it look a little bit decent, sort of hide our mistakes, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So that is ready to go. There's still a couple things that we need to weld on, and then we're gonna get to priming and painting the chassis. So what I'm doing right now is I'm working on drawing out the metal for the floorboards. So these floorboards, as you can see, there's a lot of rust, there's a lot of pitting, there's literally holes straight to the floor. Um, we're not gonna be driving this cart on the road or anything like that. It's just gonna be a conference showpiece for us. So what we're gonna do is cover this entire floorboard in new sheet metal, and we'll tack weld it down to the good parts of this floor. So I'm sitting in here and I'm with a tape measure and just a little angle finder, digital angle finder, 
we're able to get our measurements for what we're going to need for the sheet metal and sort of match exactly what they had down here before. That's exactly how they put the floorboard in this thing in the first place. This is in pieces. And so we're going to do that, take it over to the plasma machine, and we'll cut it all out. We're cutting this out of 16 gauge steel and once we brought it into our software, Landon was able to take it back to the plasma and cut it out very easily. I really, really like this thing. We're brand new to metalworking, so don't judge us too much. We're brand new to working with plasma. So we're still learning all the features there. But it's so cool to be able to take an idea or a part in mind, throw it on the computer, and then bring it over to the plasma and cut it out. See how all of this fits on this yet so let's see if we got our measurements right <laughs> that is pretty that is pretty tight tolerances and I got one little oh there it goes look at that that is not bad at all all right I am so excited with how efficient it is to just draw something up, cut it out on your plasma, and bring it over here to the table and just cut it. So freaking cool to be able to do that. <laughs> just like that, we've got a floorboard for the bus. Holy cow, now let's go see if we can put it in and see if it actually fits. <laughs> that ain't bad. All right, we got the shop sort of tinted off so that we can paint the bus. And I've already gone ahead and gone underneath um, we lifted it with the gantry crane, and then we've got some safety straps on it so this thing cannot fall on us. Um, we went ahead and used this Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer. Again, we did sandblast everything, so it was pretty clean metal. But um, we've gone ahead and sprayed everything about the chassis and underneath the metal um, to go ahead and prevent it from rusting anymore and prevent it from rusting onto the new sheet metal that we're fixing to apply. We're actually going to use this wet edge, um, which is a really good polyurethane paint to go ahead and seal all of the metal and steel on the bus. We even went ahead and did the original floorboards that were all rusted out because for our purpose, you know, I would not do this if we're typically doing a restoration. But in our time constraint that we have of just, you know, two, three months, we're going to cover this with that sheet of... Uh, sheet metal that we cut on the plasma. So we wanted to make sure that rust wouldn't transfer from the original onto our new floorboard. So we went ahead and sprayed this as well. We're gonna spray this, same thing with the Total Boat product. Landon is gonna be working on the new floorboards for the bus. We've got them all cut out and uh, cleaned, ready to go. We're gonna be using a three to one primer from Total Boat. So this is their Total Protect. Uh, it's really good for even underwater metals, so I have no worry that this is going to be perfect for what we need to do. It's a three to one mixture. We can thin it and we're going to tin it with black dispersion uh, pigments and we are going to make this thing look really, really good. So we'll do the underside of these first, then we will mount them into the bus. We're going to plug weld back into the bus, even use a little bit of Total Boats Fixo. Um, to make sure that it makes a good bond with the other metal. And then um, once they're in the bus, we'll come back with another couple coats and put this on the top. So that is the plan. Let's get to cleaning up this space so that we can go ahead and start spraying and rolling all of this on. It's going to be a dirty job. This Total Protect from Total Boat rolls on beautifully and you can brush it as well. It does a really good job of sealing the clean metal to really protect it from any type of rust. Now we're gonna be spraying on Toto Boat's Wet Edge. This is an excellent product. It sprays really, really well through our 3M system and it just lays down flawlessly. You just gotta bend yours. All 
All right, so we're back on the floorboards. Landon's in here. He went ahead and sort of plug welded a little bit of here uh, on the, um, the new top floorboard to the original. This metal that we're working with is not the best, so plug welding has been a little bit difficult. We've used some rivets in places, but this one actually held down pretty decent. So what we're gonna do to prevent the metals, the two metals together from making a lot of noise and sort of squeaking is we're gonna be using Total Boat's Thixo Epoxy to go ahead and adhere a little bit onto this material and then he's still going to do the plug weld and tack weld the sheet down. One project at a time, but the back of the bus where the party happens, it's already sealed, ready to go, tacked down. Floorboards are still ready to go. I'm high as a kite because this stuff smells and I don't wear a mask. So yeah, current project moving and a grooving. Woo, okay. I think that's about got it. That is a dirty, sticky job, but I'm glad Total Boat sent this little bunny suit so that I can do this the right way. So now we're just gonna let it dry and then we'll lift it back up and see if we missed any spots later. But we still got a lot more work to do. Whew, it's hot in here. We are gonna have a maker meetup slash mini bus sanding party. So we've got a lot of people coming in from really states away even um, to come help us sand fiberglass, use some fairing compound, doing some gel coat, getting all the metals right, getting everything prepared and ready for uh, primer and paint. Now we had a lot of friends come into town to stay with us over the weekend to help finish this bus. It was such an unbelievable thing to have all these people come together to help us work on the bus. So much fun and I really appreciate everybody that did come in to help with us. We did have a little bit of fiberglass repair but it really wasn't all that much. We used Total Boat's fiberglass sheeting and used high performance epoxy to be able to make our new fiberglass patches and sheets. So Mike and I and Thomas went ahead and went around and we've been fiberglassing some places, filling some voids, some little screw holes and, and patch places and things that I really don't need to have a, uh, a hole there. So we did this uh, bad crack, it was a structural crack, so we did that. And then Gaddis and Landon are going around right now and they're using Total Boat's fairing compound, um, which is a two part, uh, like a epoxy mixture. Um, you got a part A and a part B, a hardener, just like you do with epoxy. And they're just uh, sort of spatuling it on like you would uh, ice in a cake. So uh, I wouldn't eat it, it stinks, stinks a little bit. Nope, I don't want that. But yeah, it's, it's coming together, man. We got more sanding to do after all this epoxy and fiberglass and um, bearing compound sort of hardens up and then uh, yeah. We're getting there. We are. We're making progress and we're having fun while we're doing it. So thanks to everybody that showed up and participated. We're having fun, but we're not done yet. We did have one part of the fiberglass area damaged on the bus, so we had to make a patch for it. Simplest thing that I figured out to do was just to layer fiberglass sheet on top of sheet with high performance epoxy, basically building my own little patch. <laughs> That's how you make your own fiberglass sheet. So now what we're gonna do is take it over to the bus on that area that was all busted out, and we're gonna re-fiberglass it into the bus, and then we can shape it and sand it and cut away at it, clean it up the way it should. I don't know if this is how most people would do it, but this is what we're doing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use this Thixo from Total Boat. We're gonna use this epoxy to hold it in place and sandwich it between the sheet metal that's in there and the fiberglass outside of this. We'll let that cure up and then we'll come back and fiberglass it in later. Now, of course I failed to have the camera recording while I was laying the fiberglass on this, but I just continued to layer, layer after layer after layer until it was built up enough to where I could sand it down and cut it and then it looked flawless. Oh man, it actually came out really, really nice. I'm actually really impressed with how how easy that was and how well it 
it blended right into the, the original hot dog. All right, it's cleaning day on the bus. And let me tell you, we're wiping it down with acetone out here in the nice sunny weather. And I gotta show you what this bus used to look like. Somebody pimped this thing out really, really nice. I don't know if it's the US Postal Service or not, but this is pretty cool. And that acetone hits that pigment in that, that little glitter pigment in that blue. That's unbelievable. I have to admit, Total Boat has some amazing products. So you know, Total Boat is a boating company that does epoxy. That's what they're known for. Jamestown Distributors was all about boats. And so it's so cool that I'm taking their boat material and their pigments and their paints and primers and everything and be able to use it for something else, which really this is gel coat, fiberglass, it's just like a boat. So this is pretty cool. This is their, their um, top side primer and we're gonna just thin it out a little bit and then we're gonna go ahead and spray this on the bus. It's gonna be pretty, pretty easy to do. All right, let it go slow. We don't, we don't have any brakes. That's how you do it, that's smart. All right, so now the bus has been touched up in a couple different places. It's ready to wet sand before the final painting starts. Kling Spores Woodworking Shop sent us a ton of sandpaper to be able to do this. This is their five inch green tech sandpaper. And all we're gonna use is use their little hand sanding pads and they're a little flexible, so it's gonna be able to help us mold right to the, to the bus. And uh, we're gonna wet sand it, and then she'll be ready for paint. This is Total Boat's Wet Edge Yellow. We haven't seen how yellow it actually is, but oh, oh, oh my goodness. Whoo! If you can't see us coming from here, boy, that is cool. Now, because these are the final coats for the bus, I wanted to thin out this wet edge paint. So I did use xylene to thin it out. It made spraying a whole lot easier. We're continuing to use our 3M system, which I really enjoy. It laid down really, really nicely. We just lightly sanded it with 400 right after this coat once it's dry, and we went ahead and sprayed it one more time. And let me tell you, when I got to take all the plastic off and really see what this bus was officially going to look like, I was really excited. All right, well, as you can see, I think we are almost finished with painting the outside of the bus. I am really excited and happy with how this finish came out. Um, we ended up doing one coat, sanded it pretty well um, with just some 400 grit sandpaper, and then went over and painted it again. This Total Boat spray did really, really well, so I'm really happy with how that came out. But it's time to transition <sighs> to the inside of this thing. It is nasty, it is dirty. We've cleaned it as much as we can and Landon and I are fixing to just go ahead and start rolling and brushing on some more Total Boat white paint inside. We're going back to the wet edge, this time in white for the interior paint. And instead of having to tape it all off and plastic it again, I decided to just go ahead and brush and roll on the inside for more control and make life just a little bit easier. All right, it is a big, big day today because it is electrical work day and I'm not gonna be able to help all that much with that. So Landon has done the tedious task of laying out ahead of time all the electronics that we had to have on this little mini bus and everything was laid out. He watched videos, he did a lot of research, diagrammed, and now he's in here putting it all together, which is crazy because i love doing electricity i love doing stuff like that but when it comes to like making cars move and golf carts i have no idea but he did all the research and that's what he's good at right now so you can see his little diagram that he's drawn up right there so without landon we'd be flintstone in this thing it would not want to move at at all whatsoever so you think you got it right i uh, sure hope so i hope so too be terrible if we did all this and then we can't make it move. All right, quick little project down. I say quick, it was not quick. It took me a good hour and 45 minutes, but there is a window in the bus. The first window is in the bus. All right, let's add another thing to the list of things I've never done before and I don't really know how to do, but I'm trying to put in the windows with this locking gasket and it is not an easy task, but 
I've watched some videos on it and really I think it comes down to having the correct tool for the job. I'm just trying to push the material behind this front latch here. And you just gotta be sort of aggressive with it. And then once you get it back there enough, you slide this down in and you bring that bottom piece forward and on top of the one up there and it locks it in place. It's not an easy task to do. I mean, I know all like antique cars. Like I used to have a 76 Datsun 280Z and it had windows like this. And it's very difficult, even with like tools off of Amazon. And I'll put a link to these in the description below. But even these, uh, these tools, maybe I just don't know enough to know what I'm doing, but it's very difficult to put it on there. Um, but there's one hour and 45 minutes later. So there's only 11 more windows to do. We'll see how long that takes me. All right, moment of truth. We're, I'm fixing to turn you around and let you see. We're gonna try this for the first time, see if this thing is powered up correctly and the wheels actually do spin. Landon's been working tediously for two days straight on getting all the electrical done. So let's see if this actually is gonna work. All right, so we're gonna hit the power on the battery. All right, we got, we got power on this. Hot dog. This is gonna work, dude. I sure hope so. Oh man. Did the wheel spin? Give it gas. Ah! Do it again. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. That is awesome. Heck yeah. Dude, good job. That's awesome. Well done. So it was very difficult to find the original size lights for this bus. I wanted to upgrade them all to LED. So we had to go up with a four inch light. So we we're using a hole saw to cut in the new hole sizes. We were able to use the original headlight, but now that I've built the thing and sort of finished it, I may upgrade the headlight to a nicer LED in the future. All right, so I'm cutting, I'm cutting scrap cardboard that I just cut into strips to build our template. I'm using CA glue from Starbond. It really works well because it's an instant bond super glue. So I just have these cardboard strips, spray the activator on it, which is probably too low for that. And it will instantly bond so I can set the angles of all of this really, really easily. We're going to use a washer and a pencil or a pen to mark the inside curvature of this on cardboard. And we can do this a couple times if needed to get the exact curvature that we want. Now that we have our template, I can bend it, get it out of the bus, lay it down on some quarter inch ply, trace it out, and cut it out with the track saw. So we are gonna use Total Boat's Thixo again. Uh, we're gonna use it this time to put the wooden bed into the back of the bus. I am finding more and more uses for this Thixo. Why I have never used this before in the past, I don't know, but I am addicted to this stuff. So I'm gonna cover this entire metal sheet with Thixo and then we're gonna put our wooden panels in. We've got two different pieces, one on one side, one on the other. I had to cut it down the middle because nothing else was gonna fit in one piece as we put it in here. Um, and then we'll do some finishing work to it and get it in. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and attach it, put some weight on it and let it cure. It only takes about two hours to cure with this stuff. My sister Blythe, who runs her own custom leather business and a maker's market, took time out of her busy schedule to hand make us a sun visor for the bus. And she had some jokes about it too. And when is this all gonna be finished? Next week. Is it going to be finished? <laughs> yep. Mount that right there and mm -hmm. a sun visor. Look at that. That's perfect. It's nice. Love you, dang. That's perfect. Thank you. Welcome. The original cushions were nasty. Fake leather, just gross. Even the foam was just really, really nasty, but we repurposed it. These electric shears from Total Boat with the fiberglass kit came in really handy. But it's simply just folding it over, stapling it in. We did put a piece of plywood on the back to make it look a lot nicer. That's way different. Gorgeous. Look at that. That's way different than that Ooh. nasty stuff. <laughs> Ugh. That's, That's awesome. That's awesome.
bottom one. Yeah. And then this is the top. So much better. Oh my gosh, that's so much better. Mm -hmm. Holy cow, that's gonna look good. Thank you. Welcome. Man, I was beyond excited when the seat finally came in. It's actually starting to feel real now. Okay, we ready to drive it? First one to drive it. Rock, paper, scissors, ready? Oh, you get to drive it. Oh, I gotta be on this side. Whoa, you gotta be on that side. I gotta be on this side. Are you the driver? Okay. Woo! Ooh, it's moving. Look at it. It's moving. <laughs> oh. Now, what's a bus without a stop sign? So I drew up a file in VCAR Pro for a two-sided stop sign. So I'm gonna use the Phantom CNC here to do the stop sign cuts. This is gonna be a two-sided cut. So what that means is we're gonna cut the top of this stop sign out of this PVC that we've already sprayed red. We'll do our cuts, we'll flip it over, and we'll do the exact same pattern with the final cutout of the actual final piece. That way, we've got a two-sided sign that looks identical on both sides. Now this is our workhorse CNC. This is a Phantom CNC fully automatic tool change unit, 5x10 with a vacuum table. If you don't know CNC's, you should familiarize with the Phantom because they are unbelievable and you'll see that a lot on our channel. Oh yeah, no question. That looks wonderful. Alright, so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and pick this thing up. Alright, so it came up like that. We've got it in our file to just flip. Go right back in the same position as it was in before. All right, we'll pop it in a couple more places. Second file, so we'll go down, and this is the final file that's gonna cut the full perimeter plus the engravings on the top. And if we did it right, Bam, look at that. So we'll take this over to the um, router table, go ahead and flush trim that off, and we have a perfectly double-sided stop sign. So I went back to the plasma table and cut out some parts so that I could weld up a bracket to be able to open and close or swing the school bus sign out. All right, we're gonna cut in a hole in a perfectly good bus for the little apparatus for the stop sign. So I've got my thing taped off, I've got it marked. I've got my square here that I wanna cut out. I'm gonna do it small just in case. I can always cut a bigger hole later. But for now, <sighs> this is nerve wracking. But I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna cut into this perfectly good bus. Whoo! And for those of you that say that I needed PP on it, I was so nervous, I was holding my breath the entire time. <laughs> Aye! Okay. Once I mounted the bracket from the inside with some screws, I did put some felt around it just to clean up those edges, but man, that stop sign came out perfect. We have little things to tidy up now, like the doors and riveting the piano hinges on. I did go ahead and tape all of this off and paint the piano hinges to match the body of the bus. Decal time. Just making sure that it's in the right spot. So all I can do is continue to reference certain areas of the bus. So like this line right here on the on the bed of the, the bus, I know it's perfectly square. So I just measure from letter to the edge, letter to the edge, it's perfect. Same thing side to side. So this sticker is in the exact spot that I want it. Now putting on decals to me is actually therapeutic. Just take your time, align it the way you want it, and then put on half the sticker at a time. So you do one side, take the tape off, and do the other side. Make sure all the air bubbles are out, it looks perfect. So I just repeated this process over and over and over for all like 15 different decals. And man, they came out looking just flawless. It is a little difficult to put the doors back on. It's like a puzzle piece, but with two people, you can do it. Well, we're just buttoning up the last couple things that we got to have on this bus. Decals, doors, Landon's working on doors. So we're just getting everything sort of squared away. And then there's gonna be a big reveal here in just a couple days. Which I'm really excited about. 
it's been a journey. Lana and I have learned so much on this project. This is something that we have never done before. So, I mean, I've, we've never trans, transferred a vehicle from gasoline to electric. I've never really done a lot of body work and it probably shows on this bus, but there's a lot of good things that came out of this. A lot of good times, a lot of good work though, and uh, a lot learned, which is really the whole entire point of our Maker Collab University that we're advertising this bus about. It's always about going outside of your comfort zone, doing something you've never done before, because the only thing that can come out of it is a lesson learned, right? You can have a great project, you can throw it in the trash, but you learned a lot on the way through. And the next time you try it, it'll be so much better. So what I always tell people is, if you wanna do something, don't worry about it, just go do it. Just get your hands dirty, just put your mind to it, and go ahead and attack it. And if it comes out great, beautiful. If it doesn't, do it again next time. There's always, always, always a next time. Bam. Oh yeah, time to go to school. I put on stickers on the bumper for all of our sponsors of TMCU platform. Let me tell you a little bit about TMCU. Let's take a second to talk about the Maker Collab University. This is an online educational platform that myself and Christy started, and it's designed to help educate the maker community when it comes to content creation, business development, and all types of maker skills, woodworking, metalworking, epoxy, anything that you can think of. We're always constantly building out new long format contents, live Q and A's and live demos every single week. There's an online educational forum. We run competitions. We have huge prize packs for all of our competitions. So I would encourage you guys to check it out. There's a link in the description below. It's a really great way to get connected in the maker community and learn as you grow. All right, we're about to go tear the road up right now. We've got it set up so that we can tell our speedometer and let's see how fast this baby will run. Let's go. Here we go. Woo! It almost makes me nervous like she's gonna flip, but I don't think she will. We're 35. 36. Woo! Oh, she can hit 40. She can hit 40. She rattles a little bit, but she can hit 40. Now the reason that we've been so quick on this project, only a four month span of time to complete the whole thing from start to finish, is because we're wanting to go to WorkbenchCon with this mini bus. It's gonna be our booth, our prop. And so it's gonna turn a lot of heads, we're gonna drive it right into the hotel and put it right there in the convention center. So four months to turn this thing around was a really tall task, but it went really well. Let's go take it to WorkbenchCon and see what everybody thinks. Oh, 
This has been one of the most fun projects that Landon and I have ever been able to work on. It's a very challenging project. It took a long time and a lot of work in such a short amount of time span, but it was well worth it and I really enjoyed it. We are going to do more and more big projects like this on this channel, so I hope you stay tuned. If you haven't already hit subscribe and like, go ahead and do it now. There's a lot of links at the bottom of the description here for all of the different products and things that we purchased on Amazon and all the components that went into making this school bus. So I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, I'll see you later.